Hey guys, Webhead Gaming here, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Mega Man X2. This time we're taking on Magna Centipede, and Magna Centipede's stage is probably the most interesting stage in the entire game. Uh, for a couple reasons, some of which we'll, we'll actually get to later on in the game, actually. Uh, right off the bat, you may notice that control center looking room. You may have saw that before. That was in the intro cutscene with the X-Hunters. That's kind of cool. But uh, here's the main gimmick of Magna Centipede stage. It's basically a stealth stage. Uh, if you get caught in those yellow searchlights, uh, the place will sound off an alarm, uh, the screen will flash red, and these blocks will come down and turn into turrets to try that will try and shoot you. Honestly, it's kind of pointless because um, the turrets don't really do that much damage, and I guess your main downside for activating the alarms it, supposedly is you lose your chance to get the heart tank that's up there in that hidden passageway but honestly it's kind of it's, it's pointless because enemies respawn instantly in the X series including those blocks and they're always placed uh, right back where they were before the searchlights go off so I find that stealth section to be pretty pointless these blocks will instant kill you if you get crushed in one so, uh, don't get crushed by one. You can't kill the gray blocks, but you can destroy the purple blocks, so keep that in mind. This sub-boss right here, this holographic sword that utilizes the FX chip, is weak to the bubble splash. Kind of like a certain final boss in Mega Man 2. So just use your bubble splash on it. Make sure you attack the handle, because if you attack the blade part of it, uh, it will just block your shots. Otherwise, it will like to constantly wave around, it will try to lunge at you, it will try and take a slash. It's not too difficult, and the bubble splash should destroy it pretty quickly. So now we're going to go down this vertical this uh, vertical hallway. Uh, make sure you don't get caught by the searchlights here, because it will actually make the part coming up a lot harder. Unfortunately, I ended up Sounding off the alarm, yep. But basically, uh, for this part, just run like hell. You do not want to get caught by those targets, otherwise they will scan you. And now uh, you do not want that for reasons coming up. That is the alternate door. I think you gotta get there super fast before the blocks come down, otherwise they will block the entrance. But here's the sub the second sub boss. Sub boss. Ugh. Uh it's actually stronger if you get caught by those scanners, so make sure you don't get scanned. Uh, this is the weakest form. It's green, and all it does is it will fire these pink shots, and then jump and fire these small blue lasers in the air. Uh, if you get caught in it once, I think it turns blue, and it will gain more attacks. And if it's red, that's when it's at its, at its strongest and most annoying. So uh, make sure you don't get caught. I almost died there. <laughs> um... But yeah, just make sure you do your jumping well. You do not want to fall into the bottomless pit or get crushed by that block. So Magna Centipede is probably the hardest boss out of the eight to take on without his weakness. Uh, it's mostly because of his tail. If he grabs you in that tail, he, you will start losing your abilities. You will start losing your ability to dash. You will start losing your ability to charge your shots. It will make the fight much, much more annoying. Luckily because I have the Silk Shot, that will blow up his tail instantly, and then he'll just resort to just constantly teleporting around the room, trying to hit you with his, uh, Magna Mines, Magnet Mines, rather, and trying lunging at you and whatnot. But, uh, luckily, the Silk Shot can spread out into four different corners, so you can actually hit him on the walls if you time it just right. So yeah, Magna Centipede is definitely a lot more bearable without with his um, weakness. Without his weakness, he is by far the hardest uh, Maverick in the game. He's very challenging to take on. And yeah, just keep doing this over and over and over again, and uh, you'll have Magna Centipede by the hook. One annoying thing is that he loves it teleport a lot and there and sometimes you'll screw up and miss your shots that can get annoying but really uh, he's pathetic if you have the weakness that's pretty much all he does 
and that was Magna Centipede. So by defeating Magna Centipede, we acquire the Magnet Mine, which is it's not a terrible weapon. Uh, you can actually control the mine with the directional buttons, so that's kind of sweet. It's pretty helpful for a certain boss later in the game. But yeah, it fires a very slow projectile. It's it's not too bad, not too annoying. So now we're going to be taking on the next stage, which is Crystal Snail. Why? Well, he's weak to the Magnet Mine. Go figure. <laughs> now, Crystal Snail stage is probably one of the more uh, interesting stages in the game. It has one of my favorite themes in the game, actually. I really love Crystal Snail's theme a lot. Really awesome. <laughs> but uh, right off the bat, there's another heart tank we can get, and it's through the use of this ride armor. Uh, make sure you hover, dash off at the precise moment. Uh, hope you have strike chain there, otherwise you'll probably fall into the bottomless pit. Uh, you can make it there without the strike chain. However, I prefer to use strike chain unless I don't make it. But that's how you get the sub tank. Very long uh, stretch, very uh, long jump. So make sure you time it wisely. So yeah, we do get to see this right armor again. However, it's short-lived because we we get to a part where we can't take it any further. Oh well, these green crystals. I think if they run into you, regardless if you're if you're at a wall or not, they will instant kill you. So be careful. Uh, crystal snail stage, probably one of the more um, annoying stages in the game. It's filled with a lot of instant kill obstacles, spikes, those green crystal shards that. Sh uh, they're super fast and whatnot, and then there's the sub boss, which is pretty goddamn annoying. It fires a bunch of bouncy balls, and uh, you can only hit it via that drone inside a crystal. Uh, it's weak to the spinning wheel, so utilize that, and you'll take it out with no issue whatsoever. However, if you don't have that, it can be very annoying to fight. And uh, holy shit, you move super fast, and I almost died there. I almost died there, Jesus. So there is a Dr. Light capsule here. You go over here, kill these couple enemies over right here that like to bounce these lasers all over the place, and there's your Dr. Light capsule. This one gives you the helmet upgrade, which is, it's a lot more useful than the first up helmet upgrade in the sense that you, use, you can use it more for uh, more situations, for stuff you normally can't see. But if you know the game uh, from the back of your hand like I do, it's absolutely pointless. It's absolutely worthless. Also, it's super hard to utilize even when you don't know the whole game because you don't know what's a secret pathway and what's not your first time. Uh, that one's obvious, but some of the other stuff isn't. Like, who would know how to use this thing in uh, Morph Moth stage to find a Dr. Light Castle? You'll never know that your first time. So, yeah, it's pretty... It's not super helpful, but hey, it's, it's better than X1's. At least it has more utility, you know? For newcomers. For newcomers, at least. Uh, this part is probably the most dangerous green crystal of all because it has all these... Uh, blocks, these uh, crystal, crystallations, I don't know what they are, in the way, and that can uh, catch you off guard. And then there's these damn bats, you know, these bats are so annoying in this stage because they're placed in places where you can't hit them right, because you know, you, you can only hit stuff horizontally, and that can be super dangerous for that that seg section because, you know, the green crystal kills you instantly if you touch it. At least, I think it kills you instantly if you touch it, regardless if you're near a wall or not. I don't know, I haven't died in this area in a while, but still, it's kind of annoying. Uh, Crystal Snail is probably one of the more annoying bosses to take out without his weakness because he likes to slow down time and he constantly likes to be in his shell and you can't damage him while he's in the shell. Luckily, the Magnet Mine makes his boss fight a lot easier. Uh, one trick, if uh, if you hit him, he will get stunned and get out of his shell. 
And then while, and then while he's doing that, you can throw another magnet mine at him. And you can get him into this loop where he'll constantly jump right in front of you. But he'll always be right in front of you. So you can constantly do this over and over and over again. You can actually kick the shell away from him so he doesn't go back in it. But uh, I just prefer to uh, damage him and then and then I damage him again. So this is a pretty annoying gimmick. He'll slow down time and slow you down while he's a lot faster. And that's pretty annoying. They also fire uh, Crystal Hunters at you, and they can be very annoying to deal with. But with Magnet Mine, Mag... I'm sorry. Uh, Crystal Snail should not be much of a threat. So by defeating Crystal Snail, we acquire the Crystal Hunter, which is actually my favorite weapon in the game, in a sense that it, free it can freeze certain enemies, and then if you dash into them, you'll always, always get weapon ammo. It's super awesome, it's super cool. It's not effective against all enemies. Some enemies are immune to it, but it's a pretty helpful tool. It can be used to get to uh, make platforms. It can be used to just freeze annoying enemies in place and you can just dash into them and kill them. I really, really like the Crystal Hunter a lot. It's probably my favorite weapon in the game. Which is sad because I find most of the weapons in Mega Man X2 to not really all, be all that useful, honestly. Uh, some of them are, like the Speed Burner and the Strike Chain, but most of them are pretty... Eh, they're not really that reliable. So now we are in Overdrive Ostrich's stage, and this is probably the most frustrating stage by far for me. Mainly because of the goddamn heart tank. If you decide not to backtrack like I decided to do, and try to acquire the heart tank on your first run, you're going to fuck up here a lot, and it's so aggravating. Very, very aggravating because I fuck up here so many times. Uh, reason why is, well, it's mostly a jet bike sequence, and you need to have this jet bike inside the uh, the building coming up in order to receive the heart tank. And if you fuck up, uh, the checkpoint is inside the building, meaning you will not be able to get another jet bike to try again. You have to redo the whole stage all over again, or go back later. There are other ways to get that heart tank. Uh, you can use the fully charged speed burner to get it. You can use, I think you can use an air dash to get it with the com with com combination to the speed burner. But uh, I just prefer to get it on my first try just so I don't have to backtrack. So by using the spinning wheel it, on those blocks, we can make a pathway into our next Dr. Light capsule, which gives us the leg parts. Now the leg parts will allow us to dash in midair Hence, we get the Air Dash, and the Air Dash will become pretty much another useful tool throughout the entire X-Series. Because uh, it will save us from certain instant death situations, and it's pretty fun to use. I really like the Air Dash a lot. And that's it. That was Those were the only two items in this stage, so we don't have to come back here again. Thank God. And now we're at the boss. Yeah, the stage was that short. It's really just a jet bike sequence, and that's about it. So, uh, after blowing up this rocket, like a badass, we encounter Overdrive Ostrich in what's probably the largest boss arena in any Mega Man game ever. It is gigantic. So, Overdrive Ostriches can be kind of annoying, but with a Crystal Hunter, he's not much of a threat because you can constantly freeze him, and if you are if you have the high ground, a la Revenge of the Sith, uh, you can pretty much hit this guy over and over and over again. Because every time you hit him, you reset to a pattern where you'll always fire the upward Sonic Slicers. That can be kind of difficult to dodge, but if you're doing what I'm doing, he won't do it at all. <laughs> this fight's an absolute joke. An absolute joke when you have the high ground. So, uh, pull an Obi-Wan Kenobi and kick this guy's ass. So, by defeating Overdrive Ostrich, we get the Sonic Slicer. The Sonic Slicer has its uses. It can be kind of a powerful weapon. And, uh, it's not really all that great. It's good for taking on Wire Sponge and Surges. But, that's pretty much always useful for honestly it can bounce off the walls it's it's not a terrible weapon but I prefer using the X buster and that was all of the eight Mavericks so now we're gonna transport back to Dr. Kane who will tell us that 
one of the X hunters have attacked a base. Yada yada yada. Took all of Zero's parts away. Uh, wait, what? I thought they had Zero's parts. What the fuck? <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, um. So Dr. Kimo informed you that they are, that uh the X hunters are at the North Pole and that we must stop them. However. Uh, before I go to the final stages, I might as well show off all of the items as well as the extra, as the optional bosses. So until then, uh, I'll see you next time.